And the beat goes on. Tick tock, tick tock. We're always running against the clock. So it seems. Gonna wait a couple of more minutes for some others to gather. Welcome, both ladies. Good to see you. Hello, David. Good to see you, brother. Hello, Karen. Hello, Ken. Give me some water. Give me one moment. So usually when I'm not playing music, many people know I do these live feeds. <clears throat> Tonight's no different. I come up with these themes. They just pop up in my head. And I said, Spirit, what shall I talk about? And I hear, and the beat goes on and on and on and on. How is life happening for you? I hope that if you could, you would answer, that would be just amazing. Because the beat will forever go on and on and on. Human nature has a tendency to procrastinate. Because we're comfortable in our lives. And if this is my heaven, and it doesn't get any better... That's good enough for me. That's not good enough for me. Just me. So the beat will go on and on and on. Tick tock, tick tock. It seems we're always running against the clock. Are you living in an eight to four or a nine to five grind? <clears throat> or are you living in an eight to four or a nine to five? Blissful place in your life because you love what you do. Because the beat will go on and on and on. Time will come and time will go. People will live happily. Only to die to move to a higher level. Time will come and time will go. People will live sadly only to die and have to do it again until they get it right. So what I offer support you in is a new model. If you're not living your bliss or in peace, instead of waiting to the day of your passing, your mortality, I only have to come back and do it right, so to speak. You can always use this time in your life to die now. Die. Just die. Die from the old you. Move into a new window. That's the window right there. It's often that we don't want our personality selves, our identity to die. And we hold on it with all tenacity. We don't want to let it go. Until something comes along and pries our hands off of it. And usually when those things happen... They're not good. They're painful. We take steps back instead of steps forward. It throws into us, throws us into a tailspin of being unconscious because it hits us so hard. We should have seen it coming, but we didn't. The next thing you know, we're not for a loop. <laughs> but if we take the time now to die to our old self or potentially old self, Something else can happen. And until we take the initiative, nothing will happen. Nothing in the outside world does not take place if the inner plane does not say so. And the beat goes on.
and it will go on forever and ever and ever. So the question I pose is, how is life for you? If you're moving and it's moving and you're balanced with it and it's getting better, greater, more brilliant, by all means, keep doing what you're doing. In fact, if what you're doing is working, turn up the fire, turn up the gas, put it in overdrive and fifth gear and hammer that pedal to the ground, to the floorboard of your spiritual Ferrari and listen to that engine purr and the power it has. Hello, Kayleen. Are you living your passion? Regardless of what it is you are doing, are you living it passionately? Are you doing said things in your life with passion and fervor and intensity? If you're going to play guitar, play guitar. If you're going to go on vacation with the wife, go on vacation with the wife and do it to the hilt. Because time will tick, tock, tick, tock, bye. It will tick, tock, tick, tock, fly. And the last thing you want is for it to tick, tock, tick, tock. And you don't know why or where your life went. It'll be too late. It'll be too late. Hello, Sue. Hello, Karen. So while I'm thinking about it, for those in the Memphis area, and if you're not in the Memphis area and you're from out of town, you want to do a road trip, as I just mentioned, do a passionate road trip. Come to Memphis to, <laughs> to see me Sunday, March 11th, 5 p.m., Unity Church, Walnut Grove Road, Cardova, Tennessee. Radical Transformation, my first presentation in a long time publicly. Angela Rapin, the good-looking gentleman with his hands in his pocket, World-renowned, award-winning, classically trained Memphis Symphony Orchestra pianist. He's going to create a soundscape under my presentation of Radical Transformation. Glimpsing Your Soul. This presentation is going to be about me using the abilities that I have through dialogue and through moving energy, like now. Moving energy is what I'm doing. Check this out. Many of you out there, if you're empathic, you could probably feel this. Just by visualizing me, just by visualizing alone, you can watch me and tell that I'm shifting. But when I get in close proximity and I get into the spirit with my dialogue for the presentation, whoever's in the room is going to feel it. Because I feel it. It comes inside of me and it sits and it begins to grow. It begins to grow like a bonfire. It's all consuming. But I am going to also be doing energy work for the audience that's going to be there. I'm going to walk up to people individually, whoever I feel led to, while I'm giving this presentation radical transformation. But the purpose of this presentation is about helping you touch your soul. I use this analogy often for those who are here now for the first time or for those in the very near future who's going to watch this presentation, this live feed now. You are always in communion with your soul. Oh, you're always talking to your soul. You couldn't exist if you weren't. But this one simple trick I can help you realize, recognize, understand when you are in your soul essence. Close your eyes. If you would, close your eyes. Take a breath. Think of a very fond or beautiful memory you have with someone. Remember, re-member. Remember, come back to it. You remember in. Remember, recall a fond memory of being with someone. And you didn't know that till this moment, what I'm about to tell you. Where is that memory stored? Stored in your brain? Ask yourself the question, where's my memory stored? 
that memory you just had, stored in your mind, not of one of those are true. It's stored in your soul. So Keith, are you telling me that when I recall that memory, it came from my soul? That's exactly what I'm telling you. That is the truth. Though your brain and your mind may help facilitate the experience, it came from your soul. You were in communion when you're, with your soul when you went. Your memories are the wisdom that you had gained throughout your lifetime via beautiful moments or life lessons. And you will carry it with you when you cross to the other side. It's part of who you are and you will never forget it. You can never undo your enlightenment. Your memory is an aspect of who you are and will live forever. So when you cross and your brain turns to worm food and your mind is no longer what we think it is, we're always looking to expand the mind out of the box that it normally is in. And the day of your passing, you will be taking your memories. And since you have no body and no mind, you will be experiencing the soul. Oh my gosh, while I was down there, I had a mother, I had a father, I had five brothers and sisters. I remember I was a musician, or I did this, or I did that, or I did this, or I did that. There is no mind or brain with you. All you are is pure spirit. So again, when you did the recall technique and you thought of a memory, something in your life from your past, you had conversation with your soul. How's that? Keith, can it really be that easy to where I'm always in constant communion with my soul? That's exactly what I'm saying. It is that easy. And if you try too hard, you will never miss, you will never hit it. You will never hit your mark. You will always overshoot your target. It's not about hunkering down and squinting and squinting and trying to make something happen so I can have an experience. In fact, that's the worst thing you can do. The best thing you can do is intend it, be passionate about it, and most importantly, be sincere about it. There you sit. Is it really that easy? If you did what I just, if you mimicked me, that's how you fall into the kingdom. That's how you fall into the cosmic gate. If you find it difficult, liken it to be that you're being hard on yourself. If any aspect of your life you're finding difficulty, or we can use the word it's hard. Look within and you will find that you are being hard on yourself. Tick tock, tick tock. It seems we're always running against the clock. Until we find such wisdom, like what I'm offering here, as well as many other people that you can come across in your life, if we look for it, if we apply it and see the results, and we apply it with a little more passion, and we see bigger, greater results, it will speak volumes. Dear Lord, it will speak volumes in your life. It's not really about what you read. It's not really about what you hear. It's just about being real. Being soft. So we can hear. Because when we're not being soft, all there is is noise. And you will never hear the sweet whispers of your soul whispering its gorgeous wisdom into your heart space because we're too much in the noise of the mind space, the monkey. But the monkey, it never shuts up. It does not want to stop yakking. So the monkey will continue until we pacify it. With a metaphorical banana. Tell the monkey, shh, 
I know what you want. You can seriously have this dialogue. I had this dialogue with my egoic monkey mind a couple of years ago. Often. And in so doing, it has quietened. Because the aspect of myself, the noise that wants to be heard, is going to yammer on, yammer on, and even begin to scream out loud, even though you hear it. It doesn't know that it's being heard. So it wants to raise its voice. So I made a deal with my monkey mind. I said, I know what you want. If you were able to get it, you would have it and you would not be yammering on, aggravating the hell out of me. So since you can't get it, after meditation, I said, I as the spirit and the one has to get it. And if you quieten down so I can hear, in every fiber of my being, in my clarity, I can hear universal consciousness. I can hear God because I'm being still and knowing that God is God. I'm in the current being still. So I told my monkey mind, let me go about getting what you and I both want. And if you be quiet long enough, I will let you know when you can have it. It's a dialogue I actually had with my egoic mind, my monkey mind that never wants to shut up. Hello, Carl Laparus, keep me <laughs> So the mind never wants to stop yammering on. Hello, Bonnie. So I learned, I learned a couple of years ago, instead of just trying to quiet my mind, I made a shake hands deal with it. Everything you want, I want, because there is no difference between you as the noisy mind and me as the spiritualist. It's just a different aspect of ourself. the noisy aspect of ourselves, but yet it is not really who we are. It's an accumulation of the past data we have acquired and taken in to think that this is who I am and this is how I treat the world. That's what the egoic mind does. It uses all the beliefs that it has gathered from the past to label yourself or how you think about the world and how you process all that information and everything that's happening in the world. That's the egoic mind. The spiritual heart doesn't do any of that. Not even the slightest. It doesn't do anything. Literally, it doesn't do anything. Not one thing except B. The mind wants to do the heart wants to be. We're not human doings. We're human beings. Time will come and time will go. People will live happily to die and to move up another level. Time will come and time will go. People will live sadly to die and have to do it all over again until they get it right. There is no other way to go back to cosmic consciousness. Doing it right doesn't mean a right or wrong of it. What it means, writing yourself, as in balancing yourself. How can we ever hear our GPS system, God potential system, <laughs> if we can't hear the instructions our divine parent is offering to us because of the noise? We are connected to spirit, all of us. Jesus even said, I am in my Father, my Father's in me, and I am in you. We're all connected. In fact, all of that majesty, Christ and the Father lives right there. And that's in me. Dear Lord, that's in me. That's in you. How come I can't hear it, though, Keith? Noise. Holy, blasphemous, good, bad, right, wrong, in, out, up, down, light, dark. It's noise. Take the time to realize tick-tock, tick-tock. 
we're running against the clock and we breathe, try it now. Give yourself the blessing of taking three beautiful, I want something greater than my body breaths. If you did that, take an inventory of how you feel now since before you did that. And you can tell that you have consciously shifted not only your spirit and your feel base, but your awareness. You feel the buzz. You feel lighter. Well, keep on lightheaded because I did some really deep breathing. Well, let's use the word light for a moment to exactly what you feel. Light. And you're not feeling lightheaded. You're feeling a removal from your mind. This area of your awareness is beginning to expand is what you're feeling. It's not lightheaded as in faint. Lightheaded as in there's no more junk in the trunk. And now you're here. You feel it? I know you feel it. There's no way you cannot feel it. You want to open the gate even wider so you can walk into it greater? Keep breathing. Something beautiful happens in your life tomorrow. Do your best to remember. Start breathing. Just breathe into the experience that you're having that it is filling you with delight. Delight, the light. Nobody has to know you're doing it. Just breathe consciously into the experience. Watch it linger. The person may stay around longer meaning linger, than they would have if you never started breathing. They don't know you're doing this. And or if they do leave your space, the joy you had in the coming together lingers. It lingers, just like with deja vu. What happened first, the experience or the recollection of it? Time is removed from the equation. Both of them happened. So what you do to stay in that eternal here now moment of having two set events or the same side of the uh, two different sides of the same coin. If you can remember, it may take some time to do this just to go. Oh, I got to remember to do this. Just start breathing into deja vu and the window stays open. It does. That is what I'm going to be bringing as part of my program for radical transformation. March 11th, 5 p.m. Unity Church on Walnut Grove Road. Cordova, Tennessee. It's about, this presentation is going to be about helping you glimpse your soul. I'm going to open up a window with, with for you using words, using some reading from my bestseller. The Divine Principle Anchoring Heaven on Earth. As well as Soundscape master, Mr. Angelo Reprin, pianist for my spiritual band, uh, Lavender Soul. Award-winning classical Memphis Symphony pianist, dear Lord, can this man play piano? It's amazing. The man is a master. He's a prodigy. So he's going to be laying down the foundation of this talk. And the information... And the wisdom I'm going to be bringing through, because I'm going to be in the spirit, as well as from my best seller, The Divine Principle, it's going to be moving. And I'm also going to be moving about the audience and move energy into people, whoever I'm led to, or maybe pulling energy from them if I feel a block. Either way, the energy is going to be palpable. It's going to be thick. It's going to be undeniable. Uh, welcome, everyone. I don't know who's here, but uh, thank you for always joining me as you do. And Radical Transformation is my first presentation, as I mentioned earlier, in a long time publicly. But because of your presence in these live feeds, I channeled an entire book by doing like eight or nine of these live feeds, and they last an hour. 
And in these nine hours of these eight or nine feeds, it dawned on me, wow, I have an absolute book. I have an actual book ready to be transcribed, edited, formatted, and ready to go. So I want to say thank you for your presence and your present and your gift and my reciprocal present and gift to you is doing these feeds. And all those who have participated in being a part of the writing or the channeling of Radical Transformation, you will get a credit. Your name will be in there. And the dialogue we had in the forum that is in the book, your name will be there when you ask said question. But my gift in return to you is to offer you something. Dear Lord, it is so powerful. Someone gave me this gift many years ago. That day, that week, that month, that year, after he told me, Keith, I don't expect you to believe me. Just put into motion what I'm offering and watch what happens. That day, that week, that month, that year, my life turned within itself. And my life began to explode into this expansion and expression of light. It's happened to many of us. But I want something. I want something great, greater than I've ever experienced in my life. And I have had many glimpses of what that is. And it lives right there. It's a stargate. We don't have to die to be with God. That's a misnomer. Feel it. Can you not feel that? Take a breath. Take another breath. And your next breath, invite your divine parent into your body. Can you feel that? That's real. Not only is it real, it's reality. Practice this. And watch begin what begins to come and sit inside of you and live consciously. If you're a Christian, you and Jesus unite. If you're a Buddha, a Buddhist, you and Buddha unite. If you're a Hindi fan, uh, you follow the Hindi doctrine, you and Krishna unite. Doesn't matter what the label is. The label is irrelevant. What is relevant is that your heart is open. Because what lives in the heart is beyond labels anyway. So why give it a name? God is not its name. Though it does invoke the, the imagery of the highest authority, that is not God's name. There is no name that God does not bear. There is no form that is not its, his, hers, theirs, whatever you want to call source. And because we are part of it, and at our essence, we are it, all it simply requires is <sighs> again it is that easy it is that easy as i said earlier if you find that things are difficult or at least an aspect of your life is difficult. Be gentle on yourself and just recognize the fact that, the truth that, I am not seeing God or spirit or my greatest potential in this experience. That's it. And the light of awareness will change that all for you. Hello, Kimberly. So when you have an issue in your life, Here's your issue, and it's not pretty. You don't have to like it, but let's get out of judgment about what we think it is and what we're going to call it. It's just something that's happening 
a dynamic. And again, you don't have to like it. But if you look at your issue, honestly, without labeling it, without judging it, just look at it. Stroke it. Pet it. Obviously, it's a manifestation or a baby that you have given birth to that is not behaving, so to speak, not being congruent with your bliss. So instead of metaphorically spanking your baby, spanking it, caress it, love it, see what it wants. Maybe it just wants your attention and your love, your self-love. Just like the monkey wants a banana. The monkey in the mind wants a banana. You give it a banana, it, it quietens down. So here's your issue that's got you boogered. Don't judge it. Love it. Give it the respect it wants. Because it's in your life to show you something more beautiful than you can imagine, even beyond the issue itself. Because as long as we're in the issue, it's not beautiful at all. It's horrible. And it's terrible. And it's a monster. And in labeling it a terrible monster, that's all it's going to ever be. Honestly, look at it, bless it, thank it, and blow your loving breath into the experience. Your breath can be seen as a cool breeze. Breath is life. God breathed life into man. God is light. Breath is God. Breath is light. Your said scenario will dissipate. It will not grab onto you like Velcro and stick for the rest of your life. If you let it sit, it will congeal itself every day that goes by. And then you have to do twice as much work down the road to remove the block. There are ways to avoid these things. And I will be talking about this for my presentation, Radical Transformation. So when something happens in your life that is not fun at all, just step back from it. Find your center, and then you will find your clarity. You still don't have to like it, but if you clamp down on, oh my God, this is happening, oh my God, this is happening, that kind of constriction will never allow the flow to happen. Time will come, and time will go. Tick tock, tick tock. It's a rat race when we run against the clock. But if we stop, Ah, oh, I don't like it. But instead of me constricting and activating the monkey and he starts yammering and griping, because he doesn't, believe it or not, the monkey didn't like it either. Basically, he stepped on his tail. But he will fire off quickly. Trying to give the spiritual you advice about what to do with the problem. And the monkey's going to convince you that you have a problem. The spirit will never convince you that you have a problem. The spirit will tell you what an amazing opportunity sits before you. Keith, they sound like the same goal. One will get you there. One will further you into the scenario. That's the law. So even before something shows up in your life, find something before it pays you a visit. Well, this has been happening with me for a while. Certain men I date, certain women I date, certain scenarios from every time I try to uh, get a job. Find those parts of your life that you absolutely unequivocally, unequivocally know that you're incomplete with before they pay you a visit. And observe it. Become the observer. Don't go into the problem with the problem and try to meet your way in there and make sense of it. Step out it. And be the light of awareness. 
And if this problem is considered dark and dense, and awareness in the light of awareness is light, just by being aware of it dissipates the darkness. How's that for effortless ease? And not being hard on yourself and being in difficulty. And the beat goes on. Tick tock, tick tock. We're always running against the clock. Try this very simple exercise. Very, very simple exercise. As much as you can, and only unless you have to, because you do have a job, and you do not have to know when to get there, and when lunch is coming, and when you have to punch out. I get it. Begin to practice never looking at a clock or a timepiece as much as possible. And you will find no more tick-tock, tick-tock, and always running against the clock. Removing yourself from looking at a timepiece will keep you in the now versus the future. How much more time do I have before I leave the house? How much more time do I have before I leave work? How much time do I have before I have to do this, that, or the other? That's anxiety. That's anxiety thoughts always leaning into the future that has not happened yet. Stay away from a timepiece and you will find yourself right here in the eternal now. Right here. And time will flee from you. And guess what? Again, you will have a glimpse of your own soul. Because the soul lives now for eternity. Right now is now. And right now is now. The now moment I just had a second ago was a second ago. That's gone. But if you can stay in the now moment and through, again, breathing consciously. And I told you how breathing consciously into your experience, good, bad, up, down, it doesn't matter. Whatever the experience is, it will linger. Well, Keith, I don't want those negative things you talk about to linger. No, it's all about the intention you bring to the breath, you bring to the table. I'm breathing into this experience because it's going to dissipate. Well, you keep breathing, it'll dissipate quicker. So if you live in the now moment, what will help you stay in a now moment is conscious breath. Thoughts take us out of the now moment. Thoughts take us to the past. Thoughts take us to the future. You cannot breathe and think at the same time. <laughs> Try it. You can't do it. When you're breathing, you are not thinking. And if you're not thinking, you're touching the soul because the monkey is quiet. And the gate of the heart, the kingdom opens up. And now you're dwelling at the threshold of the kingdom with the doors behind you. The golden doors are just open. And the light comes out from behind you like, like you're a rock star. Because you are a rock star. So you breathe and thoughts disappear. And because there's no thought of past or future, you're in the now moment. So you keep breathing. So your now moment is not so choppy. And it may take practice. i got to remember to breathe. Then all of a sudden you, you, something happens and you forget to breathe. And you go, oh, i got to remember to breathe. But after you do this for a while, the intervals stop. Then you're always conscious of the moment because you're always conscious of your breath. Unless you have to have a dialogue with someone, that's understandable because you're a human being on earth playing in the arena of humanity with brothers and sisters and people you love being around. You stay with the breath. And the intervals don't happen like this. You're living in the now moment. It's called spiritual expansion. It's called living in the kingdom. No thought. That's why the Tibetan Buddhist monks meditate. Not because they're trying to relax. <laughs> they're dropping in on the cosmic dialogue. They're listening to God. And they're humble. And they can hear. 
They're in the now moment. You think they're abstinent <laughs> or uh, absolved of all these things? You know, you think they want to denounce a, a worldly human life for no reason? They know something that pe most people in the West do not. That in that silence, be still and know that I'm God, that they have made contact. Close encounters are the best kind. They are having dialogue with the divine parent. That's why they're humble. They're always in genuflect mode like Christ. Christ washed the feet of Thomas, the one that supposedly ratted him out. Why would he do that? Because it's called humility. And he knows the power in humility by being reverent and being of service, and being soft. And not abrasive and not hard. And you will never ever in your life find a Tibetan Buddhist monk in judgment. You will never find it. Because they know that judgment keeps them from the cosmic dialogue. Judgment is a thought. It's the monkey giving us, you, whoever, its opinion of how things should be or should not be, what we should or should not do. That's what judgment is. Judgment doesn't mean that you're calling someone a name. You could call someone a name and it not be judgment at all. You call them a name using that as a word to describe a particular behavior, calling a spade or a spade. But you and you alone know whether you mean it through judgment or not. But judgment implies a thought. And thought implies not being in the moment. And not being in the moment causes suffering. Suffering is an option. It causes suffering. Judgment causes suffering. Not only within the person. It causes suffering within you first. And then we extend that and project that outward onto someone else. Because I don't want to feel this crap by myself. Because I live in misery. And misery loves company. So I want to at least bring somebody else into my world because I'm alone. Guess what? If we continue to judge people in the world and everything about it, you will always feel alone and empty inside of yourself. There can be a thousand people around you and you will feel alone. If you ever take a walk in the woods, next time, wherever it is you are, don't judge this as a rabbit, and this as a turtle, and this as a frog, and this as an oak tree, and this as whatever it is. That's, that's all judgment. You're using labels, yes, I understand, but still, it is judgment. Instead, and even though you see all these critters in all these trees and all these things, when you no longer label it, or judge it to be a frog, a rabbit, a turtle, a tree. It is judgment. Because I'm saying this is what you are, this is what you are, and that's what you are. When you step back from all that, it all begins to seamlessly blend together, and it begins to glow. <laughs> it begins to glow. You will see a soft glow about everything. You will see certain hues pop out that you've never seen before. Try it. Step back. Get out of judgment. And when you're in this place of non-judgment, walking in the woods or wherever it is, on a beach, wherever it is you may be, judgment keeps us separate from that which we are judging. Non-judgment creates a unification. And in the unification, like this moment, like I'm feeling right now, and hopefully you are as well. Because you are shifting that I'm doing this dialogue. You are shifting. You're probably also shifting because of your own intention to. But in so doing, you don't feel a disconnect. Everything is your ally. The frog, the fish, the turtle, the tree. It's all part of who you are. And because we're not in judgment mode, we can feel it's all part of our cosmic family. It's all cosmic energy. This is us being present on this earth is not an earth thing. This is a cosmic thing. And we have the opportunity now in this life to be on this plane, to be able to feel all of it. 
because we embody all of it, but we have forgotten how to feel one with it. And when we do that, we get to draw it all in. As I said in Star Wars, use the force. It's all around you. It is a force. It is a life force. Do you feel it? Do you feel what I'm talking about? Right now, take a breath. Put your hand over the gate with the intentions of knocking on the gate. Open it up. Do you feel it? And if your answer is yes, that is what getting out of judgment will do for you. Because when you took those breaths just now with the intention of connecting divine parent, you felt it. Live in this modality as often as you can on purpose. And you will become illumined. You'll become illumined. And then you can use that energy on purpose. You take a piece of your light and you can stick it into someone. You can share it with the world, become an amazing contribution. Just by being present with yourself. Have you ever been in a room with a rock star? Have you ever been in a room with a movie star? Have you ever been in a room with someone who is in their essence and they know it? Some people might call it arrogant or egoistic or cocky. Maybe that's a judgment. Even though they might be that way, it's still a judgment on our part. Maybe they're just full of themselves. When I mean by full of themselves, I mean in a good way. That they're self-full. They know who they are. I'm Morgan Freeman. <laughs> I'm Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, that's the idea. And you did not even know that said person who was so connected to what they do, you didn't even know they walked into the room. But you felt it. You felt the air about it. You could feel it in the air. And you can feel their air. They're present. And you two, none of us are different. Not a single one of us is different whatsoever. And that's what we're going to feel Sunday. Radical Transformation 11, March 11th, 5 p.m. Central Time, Unity Church, Walnut Grove Road, Cardova, Tennessee. You, I... And everyone, together, we're going to create a synergy. And it's going to begin to spin. And not only people are going to benefit from the words that are going to be brought forth, just by being in the experience, a cosmic gate is going to open up. But this can happen regardless of where you are. Regardless. It's irrelevant where you are. But keep you understand the circumstance of my life right now says I can't. I beg to differ. If your circumstance is that way, then I strongly support you in being in the moment because that's where you will find your best plan of action. Tick, tock, tick, tock. I'm asking you to stop running against the clock and run within yourself. Open up that gate. St. Peter, let me in. I promise you, if you knock correctly and show fervor, sincere intent, St. Peter won't even be there at all to stop you. The doors will even be open when you get there. Sue says, I go to the future a lot, I have to admit. I understand. I think in meaning anxiety. Darling, next time you have it, just catch yourself being in it. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. You don't have to do anything else. Ah, is that what you mean, Sue? Are you speaking about anxiety when, they say, when you said that you go to the future a lot? Just catch yourself in it, dear. And do this. I'm okay. I've been having this for so long. 
I haven't died yet from it. So this obviously means everything is okay. And when you get to put this kind of energy, it begins to just dissipate and it'll no longer haunt you anymore. <laughs> Sue says the energy is going to be powerful. She can feel it would be so. How did you get that feeling, Sue? Where did you get the feeling that I can feel that it would be so? This is future. Awesome. So again, Sue, I didn't know if I was mentioning to you about anxiety. And if you didn't, then it served a purpose for someone else. But if it, that was intended on your part to share that with me in the way that you said that you go to the future a lot, you have to admit, yeah, I think you used the word, I have to admit, yeah, there we go. She has anxiety a lot. I believe in you, Sue. I know you've come a long way since you and I had our private session, and I'm proud of you, that you trusted in me to have spend time with me. Remember, Judgment separates us from that which is already there, that which is what we are already connected to and forever connected to. And we'll get out of judgment, not only judging other people, judging things to be what we think it is. When we no longer judge it, now it has the potential to become something else. Free energy becomes potential, free energy. And you can now mold it manipulate it, wield it, spin it, play with it, and use this metaphorical spiritual clay and make something beautiful out of it. Judgment is noise. It's monkey-minded noise. Judgment separates, separates us from everything. But when we breathe, stay in the present moment, Breathing keeps us in the present moment because there are no thoughts. No thoughts about the past, no thoughts about the future. So all there is is now, and we continue to breathe consciously every day as often as possible. So we're always in the now, and the now moment begins to stretch and stretch and stretch. And next thing you know, you are always dwelling in the kingdom. Get out of judgment. What you think is happening may not be happening at all. So instead of judging something as right, wrong, good, bad, hot, cold, in, out, holy, blasphemous, light, dark, that's noise. When we get out of noise, Spirit says, what I have before you, whether you like what is happening to you or not, Spirit says, here's a beautiful opportunity for you. Move into it without judgment and watch the potential of what that thing is. Change it to something so beautiful. You have the power to radically transform it. Because you are radically transforming yourself. Peace, love, and always remember, dear Lord, there's something inside of you that is so amazingly powerful. That what lives inside of you, that's, that which lives inside of you creates powerful universes and worlds. That which lives inside of you creates worlds and universes. And it's right there at your disposal, provided we get out of the noise and judgment and fall into the gate, fall into your best life. I love you.